we're on. So hello everyone, um, this is Danielle with War Room on Wheels and this is my best friend of almost 30 years, yeah. 30 years, Kim. Uh, we're actually more like family now, sisters. And so um, I want to introduce her to you. We um, have been friends for, like I said, almost 30 years. And uh, I met her mom and dad first when I lived in Dallas. And so I worked for her mom and dad and I met her passing by um, once and then we became friends. Um, after that time, I came down to Houston and I ended up working for you. And then our kids became friends and we've been friends over these years. Well then life happened and we kind of got separated and I went my way and she went her way and as life would have it, uh, we both had been through a lot, as all of us have been. And we would see each other, how often do you think? Over the time, yeah. wasn't it like every five years or yeah. so? Yeah, Like That's every five or six years, the Lord would bring us in our path, you know, and I'd have another husband and she had another husband. And so, but we would just say hi and bye. And that went on for quite a few years, right? I would have to say at least 10, yeah. right, 10 years. And then after that, uh, we met one time at an HEB and I was doing personal training at the time and um, she got my number. And, um, and then I'll let you share what happened after that. Yeah, well, my husband and I were at HEB in the produce section and I come around the corner and there's Danielle. <laughs> and uh, I was at the point where I needed to, to start working out um, for some issues with my body and she's here she was God put her there and I had no idea why God what God's whole purpose was and so I started training with her um, be almost six years ago and um, God put right. her yeah wow God um, put me there too she was to help me with my physical body and I was there to help her um, with her spiritual walk and um, I left that day um, I think it was around that day talking uh, later I talked to her and um, the Lord said go get her a Bible <laughs> and go get her a Jesus calling <laughs> and that ever since then Sure. Skyrocket. Well, what she didn't know at the time was um, I was in a very, very broken place. Very broken place. I'd taken probably 27 years of detours, and I knew the Lord, and I was baptized, but, you know, I didn't know Him. And so she gave me that Bible. She allowed me to confide in her. So I leaned on her and gleaned so much um, because she had been walking with the Lord closely uh, so much longer than I have. I mean, she did prison ministry. She's an awesome worship leader. She's very involved in her church. And I didn't need, I had never attended a Bible study. <laughs> so um, I was very green at the time. And um, this whole uh, after the walk porch talk thing came about. Um, after COVID hit, the coronavirus hit, um, my job kind of got shut down, of course, the gyms. And so Kim and I decided that we would get together and um, we would go on walks and, you know, I would, we would work out together here at the house. And so we did that. And so since March, her and I have been going on these amazing walks. And I have to say that at least three weeks, was it, before um, Passover? Yeah. Uh, there was some kind of incredible thing that was going on in our walks. And I know that she and I are not the only ones that experience this. I know many believers in the body of Christ experience this, but we, we noticed when we were together that the Lord was speaking so loud and clear, um, and he would put things on her heart at night and speak to me, and somehow the Holy Spirit intertwined all that together. I mean, we were just hearing the Lord talk, and we were prophesying and praying over things that God would put our hearts on. And so it was the most incredible time. And so that's where this journey of her and I started with um, with talking. And we, we discovered, uh, we're here today to share about unity. 
And, you know, unity, uh, clearly the enemy is coming to divide um, the body of Christ and people in this world in a strong way. We see it all over the place. Um, but unity starts in the home with your family, with yourself, um, um, being unified with the Lord, coming into alignment. And we know God's calling all of us to do that right now. And also um, in friendships. And so we were just sitting on the back of porch a couple of days ago. We were just sitting there talking. And we always talk, but it was like, it was really strange that day, wasn't it? Yeah, it was different. It was different. Like, things were just flowing. And I was like, you know what, Kim? Is there like a camera around here? Like, we should be sharing this with people. So um, share with them, Kim, what we, you know, how we came to this point, like this talking in about being vulnerable and all that well I think I think this whole vulnerability started when COVID yes a lot of us <laughs> got ourselves having to you know for me it was like walking through not wearing makeup or you know just just we, we had to learn to um, I think the Lord's been working on all of us to surrender and, and to yield and um and, and I feel like, too, um, in our walks, we have um, we've seen a Lord really deal with things in our hearts and speak to our hearts about, about being transparent and being and opening up. And I feel like with our um, with Danielle and I, it's a, she's a friendship that um, I allow her to speak in my life and I speak into hers. And, and there are women, we can have one to two or, you know, just those women that we allow each other to speak into each other's lives and be vulnerable with. But that comes sometimes where the enemy will come at us and try to break that up. He doesn't like that because when we're vulnerable, when we're transparent with each other, then there's a... There is a unity. There's a bond there, and the enemy does not like that. And um, I know with Danielle and I, we we don't know the we we still don't know where our why God has ordained all these our yes. friendship where where He's going to use. We it. know there's a div we know we're a divine encounter. We yes. know that without a shadow of a doubt. And I believe God only gives you very few of those. I mean, we all meet for a reason. But I believe throughout your life, you're only given one or two or three maybe like divine counters where there's such a greater purpose. So Kim and I know um, that there's a divine purpose between us, but we've had to fight the enemy on that in our friendship, yes. which is why we're coming to you today. Um, because as we were sharing on the back porch, I was telling the Kim, so many women could probably glean from what we've learned in our relationship and how we've had to fight to keep our relationship together because, you know, inside we still have our own brokenness and we still have things that we had to deal with. And, um, you know, I know one of mine is pride, big time pride. And pride comes in many shape, shapes or form. Um, it can be in your marriage, it can be in your friendship, it can be in, you know, with the Lord standing in his way. And so God is just really having to work on different layers with that. And that has come out in our friendship. And, uh, I mean, I can't lie, it still does. <laughs> it still does. But I have to say that um, when Kim and I started this journey, when we first met and everything, and um, she started sharing with me and giving me stuff, and I just had, at that time, I had surrendered my life to the Lord um, dramatically. Like, I gave him my whole life. Um, I started listening and just soaking in, and um, I, I just had this this hunger I couldn't still, and it, and it just kind of took off. And so, and then through that, that was good and bad. But I had to learn a lot about um, obedience, and God's corrected both of us in many ways. And the enemy has tried. Um, we both have seen it, and we're going to share with you to the towards the end of this how. Um, what in what way we do not allow the enemy to get in between us because he's tried and we now know why he tries we now know that he's tried to divide us because God has a bigger purpose and I think yeah. a lot of women um, sometimes they discount their relationships they they um, instead of trying to work through them 
or admitting that our own faults or our own issues that uh, we have, they will cut their relationships off. And I'm not saying that God does not prune people back, right? I mean, we both have had people in our lives. <laughs> we both have had people in our lives that we've had to cut out. But you have to ask the Holy Spirit, too. Sometimes he wants you to cut those people totally out of your life because he's trying to take you to a different place. And he can't do that when you're still in that. And then sometimes he still wants you to be in their life, but then you've got to go to the Lord and ask him in what way he wants you to be in, in their life. So. Yes, and um, Danielle shared one of the things that um, she's been, God's been speaking and dealing with in our, in our relationship and with, with her, and this is being very vulnerable. I just have to say real quick, the reason we have no makeup on and we look like this is because we just got back from a walk and we thought, what other better way to talk about vulnerability than to sit here before you without our hair done and our makeup on. So this right here, we're already being vulnerable. So we're going to yeah. take it further and we're going to just go all the way down to the bones. Yeah. <laughs> so one of the things that um, while I was sort of discipling, helping oh, man. feed Danielle and uh, bless her soul and was <laughs> I watched her just skyrocket with the Lord <clears throat> and um, there was a place that needed to be healed in my life and the Lord ugh, the Lord had to deal with some things in me but I, the enemy was working there too. And he was saying to me, look at you. I mean, look at her, she's moving along. And I kept thinking, Lord, why is it, why, why aren't you speaking to me like that? Why aren't you, and it, it became like um, a place, there's a spirit called a spirit of jealousy and it became, I allowed that. But I believe it was already in my life from my childhood. And the Lord had allowed all this in me to be, he was wanting to work that out in me. And it's taken a lot of time. It's mm -hmm. taken um, the Lord, me to surrender a lot of things. And, um, and I'm so grateful that God finally broke that place in me. He brought healing to that place of jealousy and women it's just who we are we are jealous of each other and we get offended we we take on a spirit of offense and I'm just saying to you we need to lay that down we need to let love arise and I one day the Lord really dealt with me about it and I called Daniel up because he, the Lord was convicting me and I called her up and I said, I'm so sorry that this is what I've been dealing with. And I said to her, so I want you to know from now on, I've got pom-poms and I'm gonna be your biggest cheerleader. And um, God brought healing to that place in my life. And I'm just telling you, it's time ladies, it's time for us to lay down that offense and to lay down that spirit of jealousy and envy and let's champion each other let's help each other grow in the spirit grow in the lord because it is he wants us to come together in unity and love each other because you know the lord said faith hope and love and the greatest thing of this is love and let's love each other and let's love each other for the flaws that we have. Danielle loved me through that. She didn't condemn me. She took it to the Lord. I did. I, um, you know, I've shared this with her. One thing I love about a relationship, and trust me, it's been work to get here. So ladies, don't think that, you know, you're not gonna hurt each other through this process of, of because um, there's been times when we've gotten arguments. Kim's like, okay, I gotta get off the phone right now, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I gotta call and apologize. 
But thank God for her grace and love. I said, because if we didn't have that, we, we wouldn't be sharing, be able to share this. This relationship would be down the tubes. The enemy would have won. And then God's plan, whatever it is, we don't know what that is yet, um, would never come to pass. But um, one of the ways that we both have handled this is when I was going through that period, and trust me, I'm not speaking this because I know there's things I've hurt her in too. But one of the ways that I dealt with it was I, I understood what she was going through and I, I just we can't we were raised in two different backgrounds so it what I deal with pride so you know my we both have different issues I think sometimes we wish we could switch but one is not greater or worse than the other they're both they're both challenging to deal with but one thing I did is um, and this came out of um, maturity and I can't say I'm mature in all the areas but I'm working on it but this comes out of being mature in the Lord and your walk with the Lord is that I recognized that this was uh, an issue that she was battling. And so I knew it wasn't me. And so I had a lot of grace. I mean, did I still get hurt? Yes, I did. Um, did I always handle it right? No, I think, you know, I wear my feelings on my sleeve. So there was times I think she discerned I'd be upset and she couldn't understand, but I just didn't want to go there. But what I did was I took it to the Lord. I just said, Lord, I said, I, I'm very hurt over this, but you know what? I'm going to let you deal with it. I'm going to let you work through her. I give her grace. And um, and so what I did was I would just bless her and still be her friend, still walk through it with her. Um, I would still pray over her, intercess for her, because she, she went on all these amazing um, uh, trips and worship um schooling and places that she went and I would just intercess for her over those times but the, I have to tell you the coolest thing about all of it that um, came out of it was uh, number one I love the Lord's voice even when he corrects me I like the Lord's voice I mean the correction not so much but just the fact that I heard him correct me is I just I'll ne that'll never get old for me I'll, I would never trade the Lord's voice for nothing but what was cool was is that I was able to take it to the Lord my father heard me, and in his own timing, he was able to speak to Kim about it. And so what's really cool is I knew the Lord heard me, and then he healed it. So I let him battle it. I let him do the war for me. In other words, in this one area, and as I'm talking, I need to get so much better at this. But in this one area, I was allowed the Lord to do the work for me, and I didn't have to step in, and um, and He took care of it. And so, and you know what? There was greater healing out of it because she was healed. There was forgiveness in there, and there was great. There's always grace between us. There is. Yeah, there's grace between us, and I mean, we go, we always, um, even on our walks, you know. Like she lets, we've given each other permission to speak into each other's lives. And I can tell there's times when neither one of us like hearing it. I'm, I'm worse than she is because I'll always, but, 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 but. My husband's out there probably laughing at me. Yeah, you do do that. But anyways, it, but this is what I told her one day. Did I not tell you that one day? I said, you know what? I understand I still have an issue in this pride thing, but I thank you for your grace that you, that she's, she knows I know I have an issue with it, and I thank her for a friendship that I can work that out in our friendship. That she just doesn't cut me off and says, and you know what? I pray she hangs in there because it might be a year. It might be two years, but who knows? But you know what? She knows that I'm aware of it, and um, I, I do my part, and I try to be diligent and recognize it and submit to the Holy Spirit and then put it aside so that way... And I think she notices that. I don't do it all the time, probably. But I think she notices, I don't know, do you, when I, do you, can you tell when I do it sometimes? Yes, You're I'm like, okay, she's working on it, right? I, well, <laughs> and, you know, this is the thing, is whatever you're dealing with, whatever, if we allow that spirit of offense to get a hold of us, to sit on our shoulder, um, then, and you let it play in a, over and over and over in your head, then it'll cause division. You've got to come in there. You've got to to say, no, I'm not going to allow this and take it to the Lord and let him deal with it like she did with me. And, 
and I've done with her. And I, and so, and it's funny, we, we both have had these situations where we've dealt with in arguments or not even arguments. We have, we've had some pretty, uh, We've had some, I don't know that we've ever, we've never gone through a period where we don't talk, right? No. I think the way we handle it is, it just, it's there, but we just try to ignore it, you We know? wait. We wait. Is that what we do? We wait. I guess. And then, but God I, I always know. works it, you know, He God always it, works it out. You know what the foundation of it is? The foundation of this relationship has always been love. Yes. Absolutely. And so. Absolutely. Because even when I'm hurt, I still tell her all the time, I love you. Yeah. All the time, I say, I, I love you. I don't say, I still love you. I say, <laughs> I say, I love you. I love you, or I'll hug her. And, um, and listen, I can't say that I'm perfect with that. In other, some relationships, I guess it's easier said than done. But it is an example of unity that we can apply in other areas of our life. We, relationships are work. If you think you're going to get a, be in a relationship and it's just going to be easy, it's a work. It's work, yeah. and um, because we're we all have flaws, and the thing about it is, is we help each other. Um, she comes to me and say, "Hey, I'm seeing this," or if we're walking and I tell her, "This is what I'm struggling with right now," and she'll tell me what she sees. And I go, awesome, thank you. Or I, you know, she'll be sharing, you know, this morning on our walk, we had a lot of, we go back and forth and we, we talk about it. And it's funny how God will show up when we're, when we're walking and he talks to us through nature or we see some funny things that God, he's funny. <laughs> he is just funny. And it's Fun. It is fun being. I'll give you an example of that we were walking today. And Kim's, you know, sewing into me, talking about uh, control. You know, because I know I have issues in that, honey. Uh, pride and control, and so we're talking about that. And we were walking, and on the ground was a um, piece of paper that said it was like an air conditioning thing, and it said quality. And as soon as I heard that, I heard quality control. <laughs> I started laughing. I said, okay, Lord. So, but here's the difference. You can be convicted is one thing, but what you do with it is another. You know, are we going to, are we going to take that and are we going to apply it? Um, you know, I, I know, I know if you're listening, you do. We've all been there. We all try to apply it. It's, it's a continuous it's a continuous walk, and then I think sometimes we get exhausted and we just give up. But that's where we need our friendship um, to give in because uh, both Kim and I, um, and I know you and a lot of your friends, um, both Kim and I have been in places where we're tired. We just want to give up. And so when one of us is weak, the other one is strong, right? And... Um, and, and so sometimes you have to pick the other person up and it may come with a voice and a strength and a tone like, okay, yeah, that ain't happening today. Um, you're going to stand up. You're going to get straight. We're going to march this out, you know. So we do that for each other. She's my drill sergeant. <laughs> I just want you to know when I go to say I am not doing this anymore, <laughs> I feel like a tin truck. <laughs> well, that's another thing that we have between us. Is, so I grew up in a military home, right? So I did. I, I was her personal trainer, and I've done boot camps, and I'm just like the, I'm the, the, I think I'm the tough love. You know, that's another thing that we mm -hmm. have. Yeah, so that's something else that we have that's different between us, and I know God purposed that for a reason, but um, she's a lot more mercy and and soft-spoken, kind of like the mouse and quiet, and I'm, the, I'm this truth, and this got to be this way, and, you know, and, and God gives us qualities, right, like, um, for the purpose and calling that we have. Like, God built me like that, because it takes that to have courage to be able to do whatever God's calling me to do. Same with Kim. Kim has a lot more compassion 
and mercy than I do, and I'm just the type like get over it already, you know, move on, you know, because I could come to her and share something with her, and she always sees the other side of it. Oh, let me tell you, how many times, like when I was gleaning from you and learning, you know, I would go to her with problems, and I can tell you out of 100 problems, two times did she take my side. Two times maybe did she take my side. And I think that's one of the things about our friendship that I love is um, you've got to be able to have a friend. And it's better to have one or two friends than 20 friends. It's better to have a friend that's going to tell you something that you don't want to hear than somebody that's just going to side with you all the time. Because they have to speak truth into you, right? Yes. Yes, she does. Danielle's had to tell me at times, okay, girl, this is how I see it. And, and I needed to hear that truth. And sometimes truth is not what we want to hear. Never. But <laughs> the word says it's the truth that sets us free. Yes. And I, you know, I don't, I know our, our, all of us, all we want to do is walk in freedom. Yes. Walk in freedom and walking into what God has called us to do. And that's why it is so important. Right now, the enemy came with this COVID-19 and tried to isolate everyone. And what's been fun is to watch how God has taken what the enemy meant for evil and God is uniting people. I mean, it's, it's amazing how we couldn't meet in church and yet we've been meeting on Zoom. Well, the you know, we couldn't go to the gym, so we made our own gym. And we made our own gym here, and the Lord has shown up in a powerful way. Yeah. Like, this is one thing I was sharing with Kim that I so believe. I've been telling her about the scriptures in Corinthians, the one about the body where the Apostle Paul says, you know, where the body, one's the arm, one's the leg. I believe we're living in that time right now where God, the enemy knows this, that when we are unified as a body of Christ, and we lay aside our jealousy and our pride and we can walk in unity because this is why the enemy is trying to divide not only our families but our friendships but this country um and 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 different you know with all this racism and we're not even going to get into that but this is why the enemy is coming to divide because he knows when the body of christ unifies there is going to be such power that we are going to be walking in. And Kim and I noticed that when we just walk together. It's as if the Holy Spirit's like right here. How he speaks to us. And um, I mean, not today, but there's going to be, I think, you know, we'll just have to be led by the Holy Spirit. But there's a powerful thing that the Lord had showed both of us. So when he, it's weird because when he shows me something, like supernaturally, he'll show her too. Or vice versa. Um, you know, just crazy stuff, crazy stuff. I mean, today, Kim saw a pink frog. Yeah, it was a, I have a, a, a pink, a pink frog. And you know what? We'll post the picture. Um, I'll have Kim post a thing on here later and show the pink frog. But just to give you an example, um, Kim texted me this morning about this pink frog. Well, you know, we're going to be asking the Lord about that. Like what? That Who sees a pink frog with white dots? And by the way, if any of you know what this frog is, we would like to know. Because we can't figure it out. We can't figure it out. And so <laughs> I, what was interesting was that we were, I, I see this little frog. It's, I mean, it's teeny tiny. It's right there at my door and uh, where my car is. And I take a picture of it because it stood out to me. And we're walking and I look down to walk in front of me. And she's got a <laughs> pink shirt on with white letters. And I'm like, okay, that's not, so what are you saying, God? And so we never know, it's kind of exciting, is um, we never know how God is going to speak every time we walk. And, but if, if we did at, at any point in our relationship and all these years, if we would have let our issues, our, that spirit of offense get a hold of us, and cause division then we wouldn't be where we are today mm -hmm. and so I am I'm just saying to you ladies it is so important 
it is so important what we have each other that we stay together mm -hmm. that we love each other and we love each other through our 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 hurts our things with because we can help each other i danielle's helped me and she's prayed for me when i didn't even know she was praying for me and i've helped danielle and i've prayed for her and she didn't know i was praying for her and that's how it is we are we walk together and when we walk together in unity we are going to have we will build something god has god will use it and he is using us in ways i mean look at how this came today and you know it's kind of scary to come up and tell with your no makeup on with no makeup on and if any of y'all know me, me. <laughs> you know this is not how i like to be seen but no this is this is, this is kim kim this is one area that we've worked on for a while and she's and just like i've come a long ways i have i want to share the story though of whenever so Kim gave me the Bible, and I started taking off from there. And then I was ready to jump in. I wanted to serve the Lord. So Kim goes, um, there's this ministry that goes downtown Houston, and they pray for prisoners. Uh, right? They they um, they put them on a bus. Seven more. Yeah. Seven more was the ministry. Okay. And so I wanted to go with her. And what they do is um, when these prisoners get out of prison, they um, drop them off at Houston and they give them clothes and food and stuff. Well, these guys are scared. You know, scared they're gonna repeat their offenses. A lot of them don't have families to go to because they've already cut them out of their life. Um, so for whatever reasons, and we pray over them, some of them um, we lead to the Lord. So I wanted to go serve. Well, I didn't really know what was involved in that so much. And so this is like major prayer warrior. I'm so green at this, but I didn't even know really what I was getting into. So we go down there, and all these um, prisoners are coming out. And Kim, you know, I don't have a problem talking to people, but what I had an issue was praying for people um, because I hadn't done that. And I had a lot of fear of man. You know, this is one of our ways we're conquering sin or man, by the way. But we both of us have had to work on that. I think everybody does. Um, but anyway, so we go down there, and I'm talking to the prisoners, and I'm like, so I'm, I'm like, man, this this guy needs prayer here. And I, so I'd be like, Kim, come here. They need prayer. And then we'd all huddle in, and I'd let Kim pray over him because I was too intimidated to pray. Because she's, I mean, Kim can call down fire. And I'm like, it's almost like when she prays, she sees in the spirit, she knows what to pray. And, you know, of course, her journey is a lot longer. She's been doing this a lot longer than me. I was like, dang, man, I want to do that. But I had so much fear in that. I was like, I can't. You know, and I know a lot of people don't run towards their fear. They run away from their fear. Um, and I think it's just from the home I grew up in. And so I ran towards it. So I would put myself in positions um, to pray. And I had to learn. I had to realize that Kim, you know, had such a beautiful prayer walk and prayer language, I guess I should say, that I just didn't want to be intimidated. I was intimidated to pray over her. So whenever Kim would need prayer, I would be like, she would, she would put something. This is at the beginning. I pray over her now. And sometimes she's like, your prayers are too long. <laughs> but no. So, so she would need prayer for something. And so this is what I would do. I was like, okay, I'll pray in my prayer journal. I'm like, I'll pray for you. But I would pray over her. And then, and because I was too intimidated. Because I'm like, you want me to do what? Pray for you? There's no way I could do that. And that was like a thing of comparison. And I think a lot of us, <clears throat> we do that. We compare ourselves to yeah. other people, our giftings to other people. We have to remember God created us individually, even though some of us have, you know, there's many worship leaders and many evangelizers or whatever. God still has a different piece of the pie for each one of them in a different area. Some people may be called um, to into the marketplace or into the media industry or whatever. There's so many diversities of the giftings that God has. And I think that's another area that the enemy tries to come and combat and come against and divide.
friendships. You do. Yeah, so I had to get over that fear. And finally, Kim asked me one day to pray over her. I mean, and th- you know, it kind of was kind of cool because I was in the car, I was on the speaker phone, so I didn't have to pray next to her. So I felt safer. But I did it, and I crossed that line, and I was like, wow, I prayed over Kim, you know. And, and the more we do it, the more comfortable we get with it. So I just encourage you that whatever your fear is, don't run away from your fear. Don't let the enemy take your territory. You take the territory. That's your territory, not his. You take it. You conquer it. And you brought up a good point about comparison and we compare ourselves with each other and we are so different. I mean, we have we have a lot of, of things that we um, are such so alike, but there are some differences and that's what makes it so nice. If we were all the same, it'd be boring. It would be boring, you know, and um, one of the ways, uh, I want us to share you know, we had to come up with a plan, um, you know, anytime, well, first of all, let me just say this. One of the things that me and Kim have learned in our relationship is um, to really submit the issue in your relationship to the Lord, the Holy Spirit, before you take it into your own hands. Um, because sometimes we get so hurt that we want to go ahead and solve it and call out. Um, but there's a lot of stuff in the unseen that we don't know. You know, first of all, you don't know if what you're going through in that relationship, if God's trying to point out your weakness and not really theirs, number one. Number two, you don't know what that other person going, is going through in their personal life. You know, you don't know what they're battling or what wound that's coming from. And number three, um, we don't, uh, we, we, we have to allow God and ask him, are you going to fight this for us, as we talked about earlier, or are you going to do it through me? And if you're going to do it through me, what is my position? In other words, what place do I need to come from, which is always love first, but in what way do I need to approach this? And to get the Holy Spirit's counsel and wisdom before we approach our friend with whatever problem. But um, share with them what we decided to do about, so what are some of the ways that you and I talked about uh, where we weren't going to allow the enemy to come in? Because I know, like, um, I don't know about y'all, but, okay, this is just this thing with me that when people text me and I say something, I don't like a thumbs up. I want a heart. I want a heart. I don't want a thumbs up. Okay, because thumbs up, (laughs) when we text each other, or people text you and you get thumbs up, you're like, man, that's so impersonal. That's just me. I know that's coming from a weird place. But, you know, when we text people, we don't know the tone that they're sending it in. And guess what happens when you don't know the tone? The enemy comes behind it, and then he starts planting ideas um, and wrong thoughts and lies in your head. And so we've talked about how we're going to, how we fight the enemy on that. Well, and, um, you, just even on something like what we're doing right now, um, my, right now my house is kind of upside down because we're remodeling our whole downstairs. And we were talking about this and, she, um, Danielle had sent me a text yesterday and I, I did what she asked me to do, but I guess I didn't respond to it. And the enemy went to try to attack her, saying she's backing out, wanting to do it. And I was just busy putting a bed together and which this putting part my, of me thought of that, but the enemy walk. gave me this, yeah. <laughs> and so we really have to combat. It's communication, and like where I I did what she, my communication was to do what she said, and I shared it. But it was funny was. The enemy was trying to come at it, but she couldn't tell that I shared it. I didn't know she shared it, so I thought she didn't want to do it, which we knew the Holy Spirit had his hand on this. But let me just tell you, that was all because he didn't want this to happen, and he was already trying to start striving between us in it. Yeah. I mean, so we had, to shut, we had to shut it down. So I just, when she said I shared it, I just had to, I let it go. And, you know, what we've learned how to do that. And one yeah, of the other things amazing. we do is, we decided to um, 
we do a lot of hearts and stuff with each yeah, other. Yeah, we do. Yeah, like if we feel like uh, we don't give the enemy room to play, because I said to her one time, I said, you know what we need to do? When we feel like one of us is mad at each other or upset or whatever, what we do is um, we share <laughs> we share hearts with everything and kisses and lots of love um, because like I said, we don't know the tone behind the thing. What if we had it? Okay, so sometimes we've gone out for a walk and we have an intense conversation, right? And then later that day, you know, I'm thinking in my head, okay, I need to text her something to see if she's okay. I mean, don't, I know you women do this. I know I'm not the only one that does this, right? I don't know if it's called patronizing or what y'all want to call it, but we do that where we're trying to get a feeler of, okay, she's still mad at me or whatever. And so this is comes into play where when we text, we always share hearts. If we truly are like, no, or, you know, we're okay with each other. That way we shut the enemy down. You know, we do not allow, we do not give room to the enemy anywhere no. in, in our relationship. No, and I think it's so important that, you know, when we walk or, you know, just anything that we've done in our friendship, that when we... You know, we were, we think of, I'm thinking about like any time that over the last six years since we've been, God's put us back together. And um, I can't think, when, when I forgive, it's almost like the Lord just says, Whoop, and it's gone. And I don't, like, I can't sit there and go, oh, well, she did this or she did that. Because when we truly forgive, I mean, we, it's, it's about loving her. It's about loving Danielle. And then I know it's the same with, with her, with me. Like she, did, she just is able to love me and we don't, we, we let go of what happened. It, we move on and it's like, we can't hang on to old hurts or old, the old junk. The Bible says, and, and we've been hearing this a lot in the scripture for right now, is Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. It says, forgetting the former things. We're laying aside all that stuff. And we're, because God is wanting to do a new thing. If we had kept holding on, if she held on to my issues with my me walking through that spirit of jealousy, or if I held on any offense from the, the pride issues or Whatever the issue it is, it could be anything. If we were to hold on to it, we're going to miss out on the new that God has in store. Right. So let is let women let's let down the walls. Be vulnerable. Let's be vulnerable with each other. Be honest. Yes, and let's love each other through our hurts. Yes. Through our flaws. Yes. I mean, hey. Talk about your flaws. Me and Kim have been, um, we've talked about, gosh, I don't think there's anything that we don't really know about each other. But when, I, I just, this just occurred to me, um, I was thinking about this while you were talking, you know, as Kim and I uh, have allowed each other to talk about our our hurts, our pains, we work through them. I and mean, we've had some things where, I mean, there was one thing I could think of that, we had to really work through it. it just kept coming up and finally we just had to say we had to drop it because we disagreed to disagree i think we were both talking about the same thing but we we just had to lay it aside and we both forgot about it it's never come back up again but um one thing i do appreciate about a friendship that we have is that um the same issues normally that you have with a friend you can have in other areas of your life i mean when you have pride issues, you just don't have them just with this one person. It's probably a character issue that, you know, you've got to work on with other people. The awesome thing about having a beautiful friend to be able to share the fact that you, you know, because when, you, first of all, when you have pride, you don't want to admit you have pride, okay? <laughs> so first of all, you kind of put your pride aside to admit you have a pride issue. Second of all, it's so nice to have a friend that can still love you and say look we know that doesn't come that's not who god created you to be we know that god's calling you up to a higher place i know you're trying to walk it out and i get to use our relationship and the grace that she has for me to be able to do that 
And then as you walk that out, then you can apply, you know, then you're able to apply that in the other areas of your life and other relationships. And so I think that's a beautiful thing when you have a friendship that you can walk certain things out and develop those character issues or those issues that you're working on so that you can be a better person. Well, and I, one thing I want to say about um, spiritual growth, I, I, had a, I have a friend of mine that um, we were kind of walking in this place of, like, I would, I'd have a big, like, growth spurt. Like, when you were kids, you know, you, you'd be going along and you'd have a growth spurt and you'd grow. And that you'd have this, you know, one young man would still be this tall and you'd, a, a guy would, like, grow in his spurt. But he would grow up, the next guy would grow up. So spiritually, like we would grow, like say Danielle was growing. Shoot, you know, she shot up and I was, and I was left here. But the thing about it is, this is how it's supposed to be. The bot, we, as when we, when we grow, we take and we help each other up, grow yes. up. And, and so, it's a constant like this, helping each other, yes. pulling each other up, growing. And when we, if we will put away offense and jealousy and pride and comparison and all those devices that the enemy wants to use, we need to squash him. He's a bug, okay? Yes. That's what he He's is. He's this big. Yes. He's not this big. And we just look to each other and we say, I mean, Danielle, I've watched her grow and she has the things that she's learning and the gifting that she has, it's helped me grow. And it's just being saying. We impart it, to each other. We do. We impart to each other. I've had to put my pride aside and say, I need your help on this. And that her gifting, where, she, where God is taking her, she's had to pull me up and go, come on, girl, we're going up here. <laughs> and I've. And this is the thing is, this is why community, why friendship is so important. Yes. We help each other grow. Yes. In the Lord. Yes. That's what it that's what it's all about. Yes. So let's lay down this whole being worrying about, you know trying to put yeah. on a um, part of the reason why that we decided to come in here in all vulnerability after our walk and I, I have to share this that it was funny because Kim goes, this is Kim's idea, by the way, that we show up here and not get all perfectly dressed. And I just have to say, so we're, we're discussing doing this, right? And then uh, Kim comes up with the idea because we were sitting on the porch and I said, hey, I think, we, I think we're onto something here. I think we should, you know, just kind of put ourselves out there. We have We've been through a lot. We've learned from each other. I think um, I said I feel like we should just be very vulnerable and share things that women know, but they don't want to talk about. They don't want to admit. And so Kim goes, "You know what?" <laughs> she goes, "I think that we should just after our walk, we just go straight into the video and do it just like us, you know, to represent being vulnerability." And I said, "You know what? That's an awesome idea. We'll do that on the first video." And Kim Kim's response was, well, can we do it on the second video? And I was like, no, we're going to do, do it on the first video. And so um, it was just really cool because when I thought of the idea, I thought, okay, well, first of all, Kim has to be on board. And second of all, it's got to be Holy Spirit led. And then, and then it was funny because I just said to myself, I thought, well, okay, I'll just pray about it. And I took it to the Lord just like I did before with her. I said, she hears the Lord just as well as I do. If God puts it on her heart, he'll come and put it in. It went, but 10 minutes later, she brought it up again. And so um, we're going to meet for the next four weeks. And we're going to, this will all be Holy Spirit led. Um, we're going to either... Uh, here on my back porch or her back porch she has a lot of construction going on in her house right now so we'll just have to see where the holy spirit leads it but um we just really we just really want women to know and to glean from our transparency of what we've had to go through and all of our rawness um, and how God's worked through that, because I know that if we can get through this, anybody can. But it does require letting your pride down, letting yourself 
um, be open and honest. Um, and you know what? It may not even be in a friendship. It could be with sister-in-laws. It could be with um, family members. You know, I know some relationships are easier to do that than others. You know, we, we're good at this, but we may may not be with anybody else. But you can use what you learn in your relationships to apply it to others because we're all trying to walk and um, go from one glory to another, you know, trying to reflect the Lord's image in the mirror. So did you have anything else that you wanted to share? Anything no. else? No. Well, we have really enjoyed sitting here talking with you. Um, Kim and I are going to pray, and we love the Holy Spirit so much um, that he just speaks so much to us on our walk. So we are going to pray as to what we will be sharing next week. Um, so stay tuned um, to next week at 1030, and we'll be coming with you with another message. Um, if you've been with us this whole time, we appreciate you listening. Um, we are. I'm going to have Kim pray in prayer we just want to pray over each and every one of you over each and every one of your friendships that um, we can start with unity um, within ourselves being unified and aligned up to what God's truth says on who we are who are we to be who we are to be um, for other people and what that looks like and um, we hope that you'll join us again next time yeah so Father, we just thank you for this day and for this opportunity. We thank you that, Father, that for friendships and for love, that um, that your love, you fill us up with your love and that we get to share it with each other, Lord. And so I just pray that everyone that's listening today, that, Lord, that you will just speak to their hearts and help them, Lord, to just be able to, to come to that place of being vulnerable being transparent, Lord, yes. and and to reaching out to that um, that family member, that friend, whether it be to women or even um, a husband and wife, God, whoever it is, help them, Lord, to to hear you and to let you work those things out in their lives and with each other. And we just thank you, God, for all you're, you're wanting to do through this time and through each other. We just ask for guidance and direction. And I pray blessings on everyone watching today yes, that you will just continue to, uh, to walk with them. I pray for godly encounters yes. of your love. And I pray that your presence, your tangible presence will be with them, God. And that, that you will walk with them and direct them, God, and bring healing to hearts that need to be healed. God, I pray that anything where people have compared themselves or deal with issues that, God, that they will just be able to surrender that place to you and allow you to heal those places. And we speak freedom. We declare freedom over people's yes. lives today, God. Freedom from the things where the enemy has tried to hold them back. Yes, and we say, no more, devil, that you have no place. Yes, and we thank you, God, for what you're going to do. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Well, thanks for joining yes. us. And tune in, and we'll see you next week. Bye, -bye. Bye everybody. Bye. <laughs> Somebody put something about broadcast. Uh, a lot of people were watching. What do you mean? Girl, a lot of people were watching. Hold on. Am I still alive?